Uh, Dame Eleanor, uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, again joining us to kick off Parliamentary Links Day uh, 2022. As you say, uh, it's been a challenge over the last couple of years doing it online, but we have been incredibly grateful to you for uh, kicking us off uh, over those uh, periods. And also, of course, a huge thank you to Mark Downs uh, and the Royal Society of uh, Biology for pulling together uh, today's events. Now, for those of you who don't know, my name is Stephen Metcalf. I'm a member of parliament for South Basildon and East Thurrock, 30 miles uh, east of here. But probably more importantly, I am the chair of the Parliamentary and Scientific Committee. And so on behalf of the PNSC, our banner here, uh, can I, on behalf of PNSC and our co-sponsors, Chia Mwara, uh, Leila Moran and Carol Moynihan, wish you a very warm welcome to Parliament. And sadly, it is quite warm. The problem with modern buildings is their windows don't open, but uh, hopefully we won't overheat too much. But isn't it great, as has been said, to be back in Parliament after uh, three long years, to be doing things face to face uh, again? I think it's while technology helped us to continue to exist it is no substitute for that personal interaction being face to face being able to look people in the eye and see what they think and how they are reacting and that is only possible of course because of science uh, had we not uh, put our faith in scientists at the beginning of the pandemic we may not have got to this point so uh, before anything else a huge thank you to all those involved in getting us to this point and developing the vaccines that uh, we now benefit from at absolute breakneck speed i think the other thing that uh, gatherings like this do is they remind us that we are social creatures that actually we like each other most of the time it's not always true here but actually outside the chamber most of the time it is but we are social creatures um, now, for those of you who don't know, the Parliamentary and Scientific Committee, PNSC, is the oldest of the all-party parliamentary groups. Uh, it was founded in 1939, primarily to help with the war effort, to bring scientists and parliamentarians, science and parliament, together to tackle the big challenges that were uh, being faced at the start of the Second World War. And while much has changed over the last 83 years, uh, because science is now embedded across government and we've seen that throughout the pandemic we've seen the uh, chief scientific advisors from government departments of course we have a chief scientist a government chief scientific advisor uh, sir patrick valance who will be talking to us uh, later whom we're all familiar with from uh, the daily uh, news briefs uh, during the height of the pandemic um, and of course Parliament itself now has scientists embedded in the library and through post the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology. And so we could say that we have served our purpose. We've done our job. We have brought Parliament and science together. But actually, I still believe there is a big role for us to fill in the gaps and to build bridges between parliamentarians and the scientific community. And I think that that is exactly what we are doing uh, here today. And I think it's probably more important than ever. We all know that the world is uh, changing at an incredible pace. And it's important that parliamentarians like myself, like Eleanor, uh, like my co-sponsors, understand uh, the implications of that. And we know that the impact that this will have on our country, our world, and for those of us who are elected upon our constituents, because often they will be also heavily impacted. And one of the key events that we organise each year as the Parliamentary and Scientific Committee is a competition called STEM for Britain. Uh, it's a poster competition and it encourages early career scientists uh, to come to Parliament and showcase their research to MPs. And it's a fantastic event. I mean, there's a real buzz around the room. And But what's probably most incredible is the actual diversity and quality of the research that's being undertaken and it's across the whole country we get people north south east and west and there is a great international feel to the poster competition many of those who take part are not naturally uh, british born but are here studying um, and it's that research that will shape our collective futures as past research has shaped 
the world that we now live in today. Uh, the internet developed at CERN and it has changed everything. Uh, and we all know that, we understand it now. I'm not sure I did when 30 years ago, I plugged in my 2400 board modem and it buzzed away through the telephone line and up popped a screen. And I was staring out into the wide world. And I didn't know what I was doing, I hadn't got a clue. Um, but of course now we all take it for granted. It's on our phones, it's in our offices, it's all part of our life. Um, but it's all about to change again. And it's going to change potentially with the introduction of not only the Internet of Things, but the metaverse. And I had a meeting last week to discuss the metaverse, and I'm not sure that yet I actually understand what it is. I understand some of the technology. I understand it's underpinned by uh, blockchain technology to make digital assets and physical world assets potentially equal. But don't you think that it is important that scientists, sorry, that parliamentarians begin to understand this? Because at some point we may need to be able to regulate it and make sure that it is a safe environment for people to exist virtually in. So we need your help, your wider help from the science community. Um, and I hope that uh, through events like this, we will be able to do that. But we also need to understand uh, the impact of some of the other technologies that are coming uh, or becoming more uh, prevalent. AI and automation, I think will change our very existence. I established six years ago, the all party parliamentary group for AI with my colleague from the Lords, Tim Clement Jones, because we understood or thought that we as parliamentarians needed to understand what AI, the impact AI was going to have. Because people were throwing phrases around big data, uh, neural nets, algorithms, uh, AI, face recognition, what does it all mean? Um, and so we've established the group and over the last six years we have, I think, made a, a contribution to Parliament's understanding of AI. Because at the time there were two different scenarios being promoted. One was the dystopian future where people would be replaced by robots, uh, there'd be mass unemployment, the concentration of capital into big tech firms. And then on the other side, there was the utopian view, where actually AI would allow us to do things that we had never dreamt possible uh, before, and it would be a fantastic new world. Of course, the reality is somewhere in the middle. It always is somewhere in the middle. Um, recently, I was very fortunate. I went to California um, with the British American Parliamentary Group to uh, look at automotive or automotive technology, AI, autonomous vehicles, etc. And I have to say, one of the highlights was being driven around San Francisco in a self-drive car. And actually, I had complete confidence in it because it shows you the technology it's using. It'll take some time, but we are going to get there. But imagine the change that that will have on people's lives. If you no longer uh, need to be uh, fit and healthy to drive a vehicle, you can get yourself from wherever you want to be. You don't have to give up your driving license as age uh, takes, uh, takes its toll, I suppose. Um, but it was, it was a fantastic experience and a glimpse into the world that comes next. Um, I also recently visited the Amazon Fulfillment site in Tilbury, uh, a vast warehouse capable of dispatching a million parcels a day around the southeast of England. But of course, none of that would be possible without automation and robotics. And to see the pods where the goods are stored, moving around, sliding around the, the, the vast space where there are no humans, which is a protected space, bringing goods to the pickers, ready to dispatch, to meet that. It's a, it's a sort of a, a ballet of automation with thousands of robots. It's just extraordinary. But these technologies are growing and embedding themselves rapidly, together with things like genomics and gene editing, uh, quantum computing and sensing. Uh, we're communicating in new and exciting ways uh, more rapidly. We're looking out into the universe further and further and further, finding out where our origins are, while here on Earth, we're trying to find the very building blocks of the universe in which we exist. It's an incredibly exciting uh, time to be looking at science and technology. But the real prize, I think, is not the individual technologies themselves, exciting as they are, but it's their alignment, the bringing of technologies together to do things 
never previously thought possible, to reach new heights. But the only reason we would want to reach those new heights is if it benefits us as humans, it benefits our planet, it benefits our whole society. And this is where I believe the UK has, uh, can, or can make a, a huge impact on an international stage by bringing our science heritage uh, to the rest of the world and embracing the rest of the world. We all know that uh, science is a global endeavor. It doesn't happen on its own in individual labs. There might be a spark of an idea, but the reality is to make those ideas into something, we need to work together. Um, but we must, I think, proceed not only with pace, but also with a degree of caution. If we are going to solve these global challenges and we are going to do it together, I think we need to exercise a degree of sensibility. We need to be sensitive to our planet and to the people that inhabit it. And we must remember that just because we can do something doesn't necessarily mean we always should. And that requires all of us to work together to create frameworks for new technology as they emerge, to make sure that they do benefit all. But get this right, work across borders, across continents, and always remember that science is a global endeavor and the challenges we face will be met. They will be met together, proving again that science is always a force for good. Thank you.